Hi, welcome to GTS Distribution's Come and Play Day here in Seattle. My name is Rodney Smith from Watch It Played, and I'd like to invite you to join me as we take a look at one of the many games being featured here at this event. So let's go into the Watch It Played room and see what's on the table next. All right, everyone, I've been joined now by Jason Hill of Flying Frog Productions. And what have you brought to show us here now? Well, this here is Last Night on Earth Timber Peak. It's basically a standalone expansion for Last Night on Earth, so you can play it on its own or you can add it to the previous existing Last Night on Earth products. Okay, excellent. So, and what the theme of this looks like it's horror based? Right? It is. So, this is a, uh, a zombie horror game. Uh, where some people play as the small town heroes trying to survive in this zombie apocalypse, and some people actually take on the role of the zombies trying to eat the heroes' brains and turn them into zombies. <laughs> I'm not sure which sounds more fun. I, I, I can see good to both of those sides. Yeah. All right. And so, and there's, I noticed there's different colored zombies. Is that so you can distinguish? Yeah. It's has... uh, if you if you have two zombie players, uh, one can play as brown zombies, one can play as green. Uh, if there's only one zombie player, they just get to use the entire horde themselves. Okay. And then the heroes are all gray. Yeah. Um, and so the game is very modular, and you can see that in a bunch of different ways. For instance, the board is in pieces. Uh, and so at the start of the game, you lay down this center board, and then you shuffle up the uh, L-shaped outer boards and put four of those down to form the town. So the town changes every time you I play gotcha. the game. Okay. And another way that it's very modular is that uh, it actually has six different heroes you can play as. Generally, you only use four of these during a game. Uh, however, if certain characters die or become zombies, new ones can come out to help okay. out. Okay, yeah. Um, and the game is also very scenario based. Um, so each time you play, you either randomly pull or choose one of these scenarios to play. And each one is basically like the plot of a movie. So for instance, you might uh, have blow up the town where the heroes are trying to go around town searching and find uh, explosives and then plant them on each L-shaped outer board to try to blow up the town okay. before the zombies overrun and escape the town. <laughs> Um, or, you know, maybe radio for help, you're using the other side of the center board here, the radio station, and you're trying to basically uh, keep the generator going and, and get out a radio signal for help so that you can get to, get to escape the town. Okay, so we have passive options and very aggressive <laughs> options like blowing up yes. the whole town. <laughs> exactly, and then everything in between, of course. Right, sure. But each of the scenarios is uh, more or less like the plot of a really cool zombie movie. Okay. So what's the gameplay look like? What sort of things are people doing? Well, basically, in each game round, uh, it, it's split into two different turns, the hero turn and the zombie turn. And the zombies always get to go first. And so uh, there's a little handy summary card here that shows all of the steps of the zombie turn on one side, and then on the other side, it shows the different steps of the hero turn. Okay. And basically, during the zombie turn, they go through each of these steps in order, and they'll do things like drawing a hand of zombie cards so they'll be able to play cool stuff against the uh, heroes, you know, right. eating brains and whatnot. <laughs> um, and then the, you get to move all of your zombies around the board, trying to get into spaces with heroes so that you can fight them. Right. Um, during the hero turn, each hero gets to move individually and, and activate. And so they can run around to try to escape zombies, get into buildings, try to search and find weapons by drawing cards from the hero deck. And that'll give you things like chainsaws or events like Second Wind or uh, Townsfolk that can help you out. Okay. Now, I noticed there's dice. So is that for the combat or is that some other fun? Yeah. Well, the dice are actually used for a lot of different things. It's used for combat and it's used for movement. Basically, uh, when it's the zombies' turn, they yes. are kind of slow and shambling. So they only get to move one space a turn. Right. But you have a bunch of different zombies. So you can, as the zombie player, it's your job to sort of move them in and create big nets of zombies to herd right. the heroes into a <laughs> corner and then feast on their brains. Sure. Um, whereas for the heroes, when it's a hero's turn to activate, you roll a die and then they can move up to that many spaces. Okay. So it adds a little bit of extra tension because you never know, you know, you might be cornered by zombies and you're thinking, I need to get out of here. So you roll your die. If you get a low roll, you might say, oh, you know what? I'm going to just stay in this building and search and hope for the best. Maybe I can find a right, nice pump shotgun or here. something <laughs> to help me uh, live through this. Excellent. One of the other really cool things that uh, Last Night on Earth Timber Peak adds is an experience system. So in the original Last Night on Earth, uh, that was something that wasn't there. Okay. As you're killing zombies, you're more or less retaining your same character over the course of the whole game. Whereas in Timber Peak, every time you kill a zombie, you get a little experience token on your character. And once you build up enough of these, you can trade them in and draw a card from an upgrade deck. So basically your, her your heroes can evolve over the course of the game. If you get, uh, for instance, a... A close combat themed upgrade, you'd uh, be able to trade in your experience, draw this card, and it would tell you the new ability that your character has. Is this like a one use only? Is no, it stays on your character. So your characters actually grow and change over the course of okay, the game. Okay, neat. 
And uh, you can actually choose when you get one of those upgrades, there's three different decks you can pull from. Either the melee upgrade, so if you could be better at hand-to-hand -hand with zombies. Uh, ranged upgrade, so if you have a gun or a ranged weapon, you'll be able to shoot further, maybe reroll your, your uh, to hit roll. Um, or special, which is like special abilities. They might give you extra move or let you heal other characters, things like that. And of course, not to be outdone, the zombies I, also I have a noticed. zombie upgrade deck. <laughs> yeah. So every time the zombies do a wound to a hero, they also get a little uh, upgrade experience token, and you can trade those in to get zombie upgrades with things like Limitless Dead or making the heroes mistrust one another. <laughs> okay. And so the zombie horde can actually get better as well over the course of the game. So when, it, when a zombie gets an upgrade, does it apply to all of them? It's the whole horde. Oh, uh, yeah. wonderful. With heroes, okay. it's only individual heroes that are getting the bonus. With the zombies, it's a bonus for all the zombies. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, if you have people playing who are familiar with the game, how long does it scenario? Is it scenario dependent? Is that how long the game yeah, is so going to be? Yeah, so each scenario says on it how many turns you play. And uh, usually there's okay. objectives like victory conditions on there. So you'll know if the heroes do whatever they need to do to win the game before the turns are up, then they win. Usually most of the scenarios have it be that uh, when the turns are over, if they haven't accomplished, if the heroes haven't accomplished their objective, the zombies will actually win. Okay. And you actually have this uh, track over here, which yes. is the sun track. And basically it's got a little marker on that shows where the sun is, and it counts down the turns. Every turn, the sun gets closer and closer to setting behind the mountain there. And if the sun ever sets, usually based on the scenario, it means the zombies come out in full force Bad over news. on the town <laughs> and everybody's eaten. So that's usually not good. You want to try to accomplish your objectives, send out your radio for okay. help or blow up the town. So or, the game, or it, has a, it has a definite end point. Then, it right? definitely has okay. an end point. And there's a lot of back and forth play between the zombies and the heroes uh, based on the cards and just how you move and how you search with your heroes. Yeah, yeah you said this is standalone or it can be used as an expansion. If Correct. You, if you got one of the other sets, what is it? What can you mix in? Everything? Is it the characters? Yeah, it the... it's the characters, it's the scenarios, it's the board sections. Okay. Um, some of the other expansions have new rules or new mechanics you can add in. For instance, in the Survival of the Fittest expansion, we add barricades, so heroes can actually fashion barricades okay. to try to keep zombies out of buildings. <laughs> um, and you know, the zombies have things like grave weapons, where they can actually be carrying a rusty axe or like a, a meat cleaver or yes. something like that. Yeah, right. Which you know, any any uh, self-respecting zombie would love to have a nice rusty pitchfork. Of course, of course. Well, that's excellent. So if, if people sort of are interested in what they see here mm -hmm. and they want to find out more, where do they go? Yeah, well, they can go to flyingfrog.net. That's our official website. Okay. And uh, we have a lot of information on there. It shows a lot of the, the cards and uh, has PDFs of the rule books and whatnot. Okay. Well, listen, Jason, I, I appreciate you taking the time to show us what you have here. And I want to thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, I want to thank you guys for watching, too. We'll see you later.